Good morning. Um, today I'm going to explain a little bit about my history of um, what I've done uh, with uh, gardening and uh, as well as explain some of the um, some of the parts of my system and how they work. I know that um, I've shown lots of videos of uh, what's going on but I haven't really given an in-depth uh, understanding of what's, of what's happening. So uh, first things I wanted to explain about is how I've gone from uh, hydroponics which is the use of um, <clears throat> inorganic fertilizers or also known as nutrients in the field and um, use it in exact science because you're basically measuring out exactly what you need for your plants to grow and based on their specific uh, growth patterns whether they're in the vegetative state the flowering state or the fruiting state you give them specific types of nutrients that they need and uh, they grow perfectly. I mean, when I had my uh, hydroponic system, it was a 72 site system. It grew beautifully. And there was never a deficiency in any of the plants. There was never any problems with any of them. They, um, they grew, um, basically, you're giving the plants the, uh, the most uh, that they could grow given their genetic potential. <clears throat> But um, the only problem with it, or well, there's several problems with it. The inorganic fertilizers, a lot of people would say, are issues, especially since you have to mine them. It's not sustainable. It's not organic necessarily. Um, although some would argue that last point. And um, <clears throat> another issue is the uh, every two weeks, week two weeks, you have to dump the entire nutrient solution because um, everything gets out of whack. You basically um, you dump it, and uh, where you dump it, who knows? No one really asks those questions. And, uh, I mean, I guess you could dump them on the yard, but... Um, and uh, then you start over. So it seems like it's a waste of water, waste of nutrients. It's not good for the environment. So then I moved on to aquaponics. Aquaponics, and actually I do still have one of the beds here set up for aquaponics, uh, is when you introduce fish instead of nutrients. The fish um, will uh, naturally... The, the fish are actually in this tank. You probably won't be able to see them. No, you won't. But there's uh, about 10 tilapia in this 55-gallon drum. And uh, what they do is they produce uh, their waste through their gills, through their urine, um, their poo. And uh, that waste is pumped up to a media bed. A media bed is simply a bed of rocks or gravel or um, clay pebbles or whatever you want to use. And then the, uh, the natural bacteria that are f found in the, uh, bacteria, in the uh, gravel, in the media, will uh, nitrify it, meaning that they convert it first to nitrites, and then a, a second set of uh, bacteria to convert it to nitrates. Once it's converted to nitrates, the plants can eat it up, you know, use it, and, uh, and then it goes back down to the, um, to the, to the uh, fish tank in the form of clean water which is great for them. So it's a nice symbiotic relationship that the plants have with the fish and uh, everybody's happy. There is a downside to this unfortunately and the downside is that um, even though that you could treat it like an exact science it's very difficult to do so. What I mean by that is this, you could uh, be calculating the pH, the ammonia, the nitrites, the nitrates and uh, seeing how much you have and how much you need and feed your fish based on if you know if you're low on on nitrates you could feed your fish more or put more fish in but really when it comes down to it it's tough because it's uh, it's a lot to calculate when you're dealing with two different systems you, you have to make the fish happy and you have to make the uh, plants happy as well so you have really got to work extra hard to make sure both um, both the plants and the fish are happy because you don't want death of either Although, obviously, in case, uh, you, you know, of uh, problems, you'd rather have uh, plant death, I'm sure, than fish death, since they're the source of your nutrients. But either way, it's not a, it's not a, no one's going to say that aquaponics are easy. And uh, for a lot of people, dealing with fish either is a, is a hassle or they just don't want it. They don't care for fish. They don't want to eat fish. Um, you know, some people uh, grow actually goldfish or things like, uh, you know, basically inedibles. So uh, having fish is not ideal. And that's where bioponics comes in. Um, I don't know who coined this phrase. There's other names for it. Um, but basically bioponics is when you take um, organically produced, locally produced um, ammonia 
and you introduce it to your uh, to your systems. And um, so you're probably wondering, well, where do you get that? Well, um, well, here's my source. So it's um, basically what I mean by locally organic, uh, organically gr uh, manufactured ammonia. I mean urine. Now that's kind of it sounds pretty gross, but until you realize that it's not any grosser than if you say we're using a, a cow manure for organic gardening. I mean, after all, uh, cow manure comes from a cow. It's actually kind of gross as well, especially since it's kind of well, it really is nasty. But um, urine, though, it's not just straight peeing on the systems. That's kind of that is disgusting. Uh, what is actually done is you take your urine, you bottle it, and you uh, bottle it for several weeks. The, uh, that sounds like, well, what's the difference? But the reality is that when you bottle it for several weeks, the, there's a chemical change within the urine. What happens is it converts from, um, most of uh, urine has urea. <clears throat> urea is not really usable for the plants. And so what happens is, the urea actually undergoes a change and converts to ammonia, uh, to an organic ammonia. Well, you're wondering, well, why does that matter? Well, two things. Number one, as you probably know and you probably heard, um, when urine comes out, it is sterile. And that is true. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't stay sterile for very long. Uh, as soon as it's introduced to the air, wild yeast and wild bacteria go ahead and, uh, you know, in inhabit it. And uh, we don't know what kinds. They could be dangerous kinds. They could be, um, you know, path the cold pathogens, or they could be um, uh, friendly bacteria, also uh, uh, known as probiotics. But more than likely, pathogens, <laughs> or at least we always have to assume that. So, if you assume that, then the nice thing is, after several weeks of aging, the uh, um, the urine actually converts the urea to ammonia, and the pH goes to about nine. Now, what seems to happen at that point, based on some people's observations and they've done testing, um, is that the ammonia um, now cannot, the, because of the pH and because of the uh, uh, strength of the ammonia, the uh, pathogens can't live in it anymore. And so if you tested it for pathogens such as E. coli and other types of uh, pathogenic bacteria, you'd find that there's none in there, which is great. That means it's now again sterile. So now that it's sterile again, we can use it. So what we do is we introduce a small amount because it's actually pretty potent. Introduce a small amount to the systems. Not this one. This one actually, like I said, is a, this one is my last aquaponic system. The other five beds are bioponic. When I'm, and so we, when the nice thing about bioponics is it goes back to the same idea of hydroponics is that I can treat it like a science again. I could measure exactly how much I need for the types of plants I have and seeing how they react to it. So, I've actually did that in uh, some, uh, a couple weeks ago to find out exactly how much uh, aged urine I need. And so based on that, I found out that each bed, at least during the vegetative stages, needs about five ounces of urine. So the nice thing is, now we could uh, take that small amount of urine, and I've well, I could easily manufacture enough for all the beds that we have here, which means I could grow my own lettuces, kale, um, red onions, cabbage, and various other types of plants, purely with no other input but what I have at my house, which sounds great. It's sustainable, it's organic, it's locally produced, I don't have to mine them. Um, that's a you know issue with hydroponics. So you have everything you need right in your own backyard, or at least uh, in your own house. Another uh, gain about using your own urine is that you're not flushing down fresh water, gallons of fresh water every time you urinate. If you think about it, how many times the average person urinates per day, you can easily flush down the toilet. Um, easily about 10 gallons a day of fresh water. Uh, that's a huge waste. As some of you who are not familiar with uh, plumbing, they don't plumb in bad water to go to your toilet. They plumb in the same fresh drinking water that you have in your sink. And therefore, it's a huge waste. Obviously, I'm not 
um, complaining about the plumbing systems. I mean, I'm happy to have them. And, uh, you know, it would cost a lot of money for them to change, uh, to have a new pipe just for every toilet you have. <coughs> but there is no need to have fresh water uh, being wasted, not on, at least not on your urine. Bottle it. Use it. It's an incredible um, nutrient. There's no other nutrient like it. As you can see, based on my beds here, um, there everything is growing lush, beautiful. There's no um, deficiencies. I'm pretty confident that I'm able to look at a plant and say, ah, uh, it needs uh, iron or it needs nitrogen or it needs um, whatever it needs. Um, there's plenty of uh, information like that out, out on the web anyway of what to look for for deficiencies. And uh, the only thing I can a little bit see is just maybe a little bit of uh, iron, uh, at least over here. But that's okay, because um, in most systems you need to supplement iron anyway. Uh, it's called chelated iron or iron chelate. So that's okay. I'm going to do a little bit of a, uh, a spray on them and they'll be fine. Other than that, they do tremendously well with no other inputs. Um, I am actually once in a while using a little bit of a fish emulsion and um, sea salt, something called sea salt. Um, that's made from, excuse me, it's made from seaweed. So I am using other inputs occasionally. They're all organic and they really just add a little bit more micronutrients, a little bit more phosphorus and potassium um, since those are the only things that you could use once in a while, at least when, when it's flowering and fruiting. But otherwise, uh, these looking great. Um, these are some cuttings, for example, of hydrangeas that I took last year, and now they're doing superb, although some would say there's a little bit of iron deficiency, so I'll have to look into that. Um, I just took this from the garden. This is uh, lemon balm, so I want to grow that in here. So let's see what else. we got some little bit of a dill plant here. I took that from another place and there's a nice little pepper plant growing in back doing wonderfully the, uh, the creeping time is as always creepy no nah, I'm just kidding it's uh it's creeping along really nicely more uh, hydrangeas and uh, I think what we're just seeing here in this bed is uh, finally one of the beans are popping up So I have multiple lettuces growing here. This, I'm pretty confident, is Lola Rosa. And uh, beautiful red little ripply uh, plants, lettuces. And I've got some bunch of other types of um, uh, uh, fancy lettuces, or whatever you want to call them, growing. And on another note, I did want to show you this. <clears throat> I do actually have comfrey growing here. Uh, I took this... Uh, a friend of mine gave me it, and I've been growing it in my greenhouse, um, just on the dirt. And the point of this is that I read online that comfrey is actually the perfect fertilizer. So what I intend to do once I get enough of it is uh, cut it down and uh, put it into a... Um, there's another one growing right there. I'm going to cut it down and put it into a pot of water, or a uh, bucket of water, and literally let it rot, and let it turn into a sludge. Once it turns into a sludge, I should be able to uh, uh, put it into a bottle, and uh, it's supposed to have a uh, very good amount of nutrients for uh, plants, both nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, as well as some micronutrients. So I'm going to give that a try, and uh, it might actually replace um, using urine, aged urine, <clears throat> or it may not. We'll have to find that out. But the whole idea is that the most important thing are the plants, at least in my garden. In my garden, I uh, want to grow enough food for my family and um, not have to rely so much on, a, on uh, supermarkets. Because as most of you know, uh, supermarkets are, well, they're getting to be pretty expensive for fresh uh, produce, organic produce. Not to mention, you know, a lot of um, farmers are, or at least uh, supermarkets are, taking shortcuts with regards to what they call organic <clears throat> or what they call a fresh or what they call a locally produced um, so we can never tell what exactly they have and how it was grown here at least I know exactly what I used for the system <clears throat> now you could ask does the, the produce taste like urine no of course not it doesn't taste uh, it tastes like it, what it's supposed to taste like it's fresh it's clean there's nothing wrong with it um, <clears throat> if anything it has a better taste what you, than what you find in stores.